My name is Dr. Adrian Cashman. I'm with the University of the West Indies where I teach water resources management to postgraduate students and I have been one of the members of the Green Economy Scoping Study in Barbados which is a collaboration between the University of the West Indies, the Ministry of Environment in the Government of Barbados and also UNDP. Why, why do we think that the Green Economy Scoping Study is important? Well, Barbados is a small island developing state. It is very um, dependent on tourism and offshore financial services. And to make those work, water is a very important economic resource. It's also a very scarce resource. Uh, and it's one that, for which there is a lot of competition, not only from tourism, but from agriculture, from housing. Um, we have rising levels of affluence. So we need to look at how water, can, water use can be optimised and this is one of the points of the, of the study. But we're also looking to diversify the economy and look for new opportunities, not to do work, not business as it used to be done, but op economic opportunities that benefit the environment, will benefit so socially and benefit the country's economy. And we be really believe, and this builds on a long track record of the country, we believe that environmental sustainability and green jobs is the way to go. And the scoping study is trying to identify the opportunities that there are and the contribution that it could make to the economy into the future and the impact that it would have on the people of Barbados and serve as, a, as an example for the Caribbean as a whole. Well, I've been very glad to be here, not just to present our case study and take part in the panel discussions. Uh, I think two things have really stood out in my mind that I've really enjoyed. The first have been the case studies on the payment for environmental services. I found those absolutely fascinating. Um, I've been thinking to myself, what uh, lessons can I learn from that? And how, not just the lessons, but how we can take that back and maybe apply that, not just in Barbados, but in other countries of the Caribbean. And also the other one was the discussion on water markets, especially from, from well, particularly from Australia. I mean, that I have found absolutely fascinating. Well, yes, I have looked at the, the toolbox. Um, I had to do so as part of the preparation for the panel discussion. I won't say I'm an expert in it, but um, my comments on it would be, first of all, it is very much water focused. And I think one of the things that we would need to look at is, is how we can use it to draw out the connections between uh, the economy or economies um, in, a, in a much wider, wider way. So we need to look at its relation to other sectors. Um, and I think if we look at it, one of the reasons for this is, is that it builds on a lot of work that has been done in the past under perhaps different initiatives like integrated water resources management. And so what we're doing is we're learning from those experiences, but we're keeping it very much within a water context. And I think for it to be useful is certainly to decision makers and, and, and policy people is that we need to make much stronger connections between some of these policy instruments, some of these tools that we're putting there and their relationships to other parts of the economy and how actually they are not unique to water. They are also applicable to other parts of the economy. They're, they're applicable to agriculture, to, to energy, to industry, to tourism. And I think those are some of the connections that we need to work. Otherwise, we are going to find ourselves in five years' time having a very similar conversation, but calling it by a different name.